Good morning, church. Pastor Jason here. We are excited to join you this Sunday morning uh, via from the Burns household. Uh, we got uh, <clears throat> Sydney this morning is going to open us in, in, a war, in worship. Uh, she's going to sing a song for us, and uh, then we'll get into the message on uh, faith is uh, and discussing what faith is, what it looks like now um, in the world that we're living in. So why don't we uh, open in prayer and uh, then we will get started. Heavenly Father, we come to you this morning. Lord, we are grateful. We are thankful for the sunshine this morning. Lord, we thank you that we have this ability to be able to meet um, online uh, through this technology, Lord, and we're giving you the praise for it. Uh, Father, we pray, do pray for those that are um, at home, those that are meeting together. Lord, we just pray that this is a beautiful time that they can press into you as a family uh, this morning at their own home. Lord, we also pray for those that are <clears throat> risking their lives on the front line, uh, for those that are uh, the nurses, the doctors, the all the people that are there helping those uh, patients that are sick and Lord we come to you today and we just lift them up to you Lord we pray for for your spirit Lord move me out of the way but your spirit you let your word go forth today in Jesus name amen well good morning church um I'm really excited about our time of worship um, I would just encourage you to sing out at your house. Um, might be a little weird to hear your own voice, but God hears it and God loves it, so sing loudly. We're gonna sing um, The Heart of Worship to start out with. <clears throat> Yes. 
seat if you were standing. <laughs> Amen. Thank you, Sydney. <clears throat> um, as I'm getting getting ready and getting set, why don't you look to your friend, your neighbor there, your family, and uh, I want you to just say something. <laughs> I had something. <laughs> I had something. No, not, not that. Not, don't say something. Uh, say, I have faith. I have faith. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Um, so again, we are excited. I am excited to come to you from our living room this morning and it's ex it's exciting we're gonna have dogs back running back and forth uh you never know what's gonna happen here uh, so i just want to to let you know a few things we're gonna be in hebrews this morning going back to hebrews uh it just seemed fitting for the time we're gonna be in hebrews 11 but i'm gonna start out with uh, hebrews 12 verse 1 and 2 because that is the theme verse that we have. That's the theme verse of Hebrews. Is, is Hebrews 12, 1 and 2. I'll let you get take some time to get there. Uh, I just want to pray. I've uh, uh, been praying for you guys. Let you know that I've been praying for those of you that are working on the, um, again, the front lines. Those that are... Uh, and even in their addiction, um, those are the times that we need to be praying for uh, those that are in addiction, those that are struggling, and even those of, of you that are struggling with just what is going on in this world, uh, the unknown. So we've been praying for you as a church. So Hebrews 12, verse 1 and 2, the writer, the author says, Therefore... Since we have so great a cloud of witness, witnesses surrounding us, let us also lay aside every encumbrance and the sin which so easily entangles us. And let us run with endurance the race that is set before us, fixing our eyes on Jesus, the author and perfecter of faith, who for the joy set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and has sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. That is the theme verse, the theme scripture for Hebrews. Uh, we see that, we talked about this a couple weeks ago, that when we run this race, this race of our, of our Christian life is not one that is a, a sprint. Um, it's a marathon. And sometimes right now we see like we may be in that time if we are self uh, isolating, if we are uh, sheltering at home, doing those things, staying away from uh, as people, social distancing, we may seem like it is a marathon, like it is something that is going to last forever. Uh, church, we know that this is not going to last forever. We know that it's going to, con that it is going to stop, and we are claiming it in Jesus' name. So we pray. Um, that this does not stop, that it, that it just continues um, in our faith, that it is our faith that we are focusing on Jesus. It's so easy to focus on other things right now, but we have to have our eyes fixed on Jesus because he's the perfecter of our faith. He is our, what we have everything in. It is what is inside. It is our faith that brings us to him because what he did, he, he it says, that he endured the cross. He despised the shame. And he is now sitting at the right hand of God. He endured the cross for you. And I've seen so many things and people talking about how uh, this is boring. This is so crazy. I don't know what it is. Jesus endured the cross. I think we can sit and watch um, and be with him in this time of uh, unknown. This time of being alone. And apart from our church family. So uh, we're going to go into Hebrews 11 now. We're going to start with what many of us know um, as 
the hall of faith. This chapter is well known. It takes those that have men of faith, uh, women of faith, um, from the Old Testament, um, even some from the New, where we see their faith is being uh, shown out, is being put on display here. And because of their faith, they were found um, to, to be living by faith. They were to look forward to Jesus. They were inspired. They were ready to be with him. And so let's start in uh, chapter 11, verse 1, in the first three verses. It says, Now faith is the assurance of things hoped for, the conviction of things not seen. For by it the men of old gained approval. By faith we understand that the world were prepared by the word of God, so that what is seen was not made out of things which are visible. I want to start this message out with a, uh, a quote from Matt Chandler. And he says that it seems that faith is the spark that ignites grace in the souls of men and women. That until there is faith, grace is an abstract idea. But when faith takes root in the heart, Grace is awakened and comes alive in the souls of men and women. End quote. Matt Chandler. What a, what a, what a great idea, what a great thought of how great, what faith is. Um, it, it, when it takes root in the heart, that is where we see, that is what it needs to happen. We can say that we have faith. We can say that we are faithful, uh, that, that we believe in this word. But at a time like this, where is our faith? Do Are we showing it? Are we in the word? It says, now faith is the assurance of things hoped for. What faith is, is faith is a gift. Faith is a gift from God. And in Ephesians 2, 8, 9, Paul says, For by grace you have been saved through faith. And this is not your own doing. It is the gift of God. Not as a result of works so that no one may boast. It's a gift. Faith is a gift that has been given to us by Jesus himself. Have you accepted that free gift? Have you accepted the gift of faith? Because sometimes we think as, as individuals, we think going through this, I'm like, man, I wish I had more faith. I wish my faith was stronger. Well, we have this free gift and we have to be able to exercise it and how do we do that we look into god's word it is faith that we see all throughout this this word this bible because it is true because it goes on to verse two to say by for by it the men of old gain approval we see this in verse one this is this exact thing where where the writer of hebrews says god after he spoke long ago to the fathers and the prophets in many portions and in many ways, in these dark last days, has spoken to us in his Son, whom he appointed heir of all things, through whom also made the world. We see that faith was, that's how they gained approval. These men of renown, these, these prophets, these teachers of renown, of renown they, they gained approval by their faith. They had faith as in what was to come. They had assurance of things hoped for as we see uh, in verse 1 as it says assurance of things hoped for what does that word assurance mean assurance uh, can be there's some different translations of this it's a assurance or the substance your bible might say substance it's confidence it's the realization of things hoped for what is that the substance this is substance this is something we can see it's it's, it's, I'm assured of this. I see it right here. It's the confidence that we have in the things that we cannot see because of what Jesus did for us. This hope, this idea of hope, um, this is, it might sound kind of weird, but the idea of hope begins with dissatisfaction, begins with uh, sort of a disappointment. Uh, you may be disappointed or dissatisfied with where you are at in life right now 
Um, in order to have that hope, you have to be dissatisfied in order to look for the hope that is to come. You may be, you hope that you get a pay raise. That right now uh, might be a struggle. You hope to get married. I know I'm counseling a few people now, and we've had to change some uh, some dates because of uh, with their with their wedding because of uh, the virus that's going on. And that's all right. They say we're going to get married, uh, no matter what. It's going to be in a time different time, but we're still going to be married. And the, their hope is knowing that they're going to get married. They know they're going to get married. Uh, you may be struggling <clears throat> in a marriage dissatisfaction your hope to have a better marriage you may not be feeling well you may be sick or you may be going through something uh, with your uh, with your health you hope to get healthier you hope to get better the thing is what we're not talking about right here is something <clears throat> that brings this wishy-washy type faith this wishy-washy type hope um, that we see with the world what we see with the culture that says that you can believe you can if you work hard enough you will attain uh, what you work hard enough for um, but that's what we're what we are talking about um, is this holy kind of disconnect this spiritual disconnect it's some it's in our spiritual life it's not in things that we see we we, we our faith is in those things that it's in Jesus. We haven't seen Jesus. That is our faith. That is our hope because we can't see it. That is what we are looking at. It's the hope of the glory of God. Romans 5, 2 says this. It says, through him we have also obtained access by faith into this grace in which we stand. And we rejoice in the hope of the glory of God. This is the hope of eternal life. This faith, this trusting in the God that created the heavens and the earth, the God that created you. It's that faith that we have in him. Titus 1, 2 says, In hope of eternal life, which God, who never lies, promised before the ages began. And in Romans 4, 20 and 21, uh, when speaking about Jesus, Paul said, No unbelief made him waver concerning the promise of God, but he grew strong in his faith as he gave glory to God, fully convinced that God was able to do what he had promised. Do you have that faith that God is able to do what he has promised? He has listed out a whole bunch of promises in his word. Have you looked at his word? Have you looked in here? Are you growing stronger in your faith during this time? That I pray that you that you are, because during this time we need to have that trust. We need to have that faith. We spoke with uh, in our Bi men's Bible study on Thursday. We talked about faith and we talked about what it means to have faith and how we're growing stronger in the Lord. How we're even growing stronger as a church family and community. Uh, one person said they have seen how people. Are just coming together and they actually feel closer to their church family than they did before wow who knew that it would take a global pandemic to bring the church together you know we 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 go through our walk and we go to church on Sunday mornings and when that is taken away that's where our faith is really tried to, to is tested is where, where's our faith? Where, where does that happen? Where is it at? Is it in our heart or is it just up here? Um, I've been praying that it is something that we grasp onto, this faith that we hold onto and look forward to. Next thing we see, uh, and it says that by faith we understand that the words were prepared by the word of God so that what is seen was not made out of things which are visible. We can't see this faith. We can't see this, but we know and we believe. How do we do this? How, do, how are we convicted or how do we know the things that we cannot see? 
There's some things that we can't see, but we see the creation of the world. We walk outside and we see the creation. We see uh, the, the trees. We see the sun. We see all of that. And we can be confident knowing that there is a God that is faithful, that out of his mouth, the word of God came and spoke these things into existence. It says that in Genesis 1, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. And you're like, well, how can, how can I know for sure? How can I know? How can people know that this is uh, God, that there is a God and that I can have faith in be just from looking at the trees? Well, I'm glad you asked that question uh, because I want to go to Romans <clears throat> chapter 1 and show you this. Romans chapter 1 and verse 20 says, For since the creation of the world, his invisible attributes, his eternal power, and divine nature have been clearly seen, being understood throughout what was made, so that they are without excuse. See, what God made, the creation, what he made, this world, the trees, the ground, the earth, the universe, is by walking outside and seeing the stars. People are without excuse. They know that there is a higher person. There is a creator. There is a uh, uh, divine uh, help me out. Word, church, what am I looking for? Presence. Uh, huh? Presence. Divine presence. Um, a divine in inventor or uh, of, of us, of the world. They see that they're without excuse just by looking at these things. You say, well, I can, how can we prove this? Well, right now, outside is windy. How do I know it's windy? Prove it to me. Prove to me that there's wind. How can you prove that there's wind? You can't see wind, but you can see the evidence of the wind by the trees, by the leaves that they're blowing. That is the same thing when, when we talk about faith. It's something we can't see, but the evidence of that of our faith is, is our, our, our works that we do for Jesus and glorifying God and being strong in that faith. So what does this all look like when we talk about our faith, when, what faith is and what it isn't? Uh, it's, it's a hope, but it's a, it's a spiritual hope. It's a hope that I know that I'm going to see Jesus, that it's just not this life right now, but it's a hope in this life to come. We may be frightened, we may be scared, we may be freaking out over um, of life in general, and now this pops up, and it makes everything that much worse. But, church, I'm telling you that without faith, it says that it is impossible to please God. Verse 6 of chapter 11 in Hebrews. For he who comes to God must believe that he is. We must believe that God is. And that he is a rewarder of those who seek him. Are you seeking Jesus today? Are you seeking him? Are you getting that faith? Are you receiving that faith? Because it says without faith, it's impossible to please him. How do we please him? With our faith. With our faith by giving God glory. And it says that when we come to him, we must believe that he is. And it stops. So we must believe that he is, that he is what? That he's the Alpha, the Omega, the beginning and the end. He is, he is what he says he is. I am that I am. We must believe that he is. That is the faith that we have. Faith that he can do anything that he wants to in this world. Anything in my life, anything in our life, we have to believe that. <coughs> Maybe you don't know Jesus. Maybe you don't know who he is. So what does this look like for you as you're watching, possibly, this message this morning? Maybe you're, you're really longing to believe and truly, truly believe, but you just, you can't bring your own mind, your own heart, and your, 
your head to wrap around or even to believe. Now, we can't be this. I don't want you to be discouraged. I don't want you to walk away. I don't want, what I want you to do is pray that God opens your eyes. I want to pray that he opens your eyes to this reality and sees Jesus for who he is, that faith that we can have. Because Psalm 34, 8 says, Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. When we open our eyes, when, when we are allowing the Spirit to come in and we, we have that faith, we can see, and when we see the words of God, we can taste. And it is so, so good. We've seen evidence throughout this all over the world um, in these last month, these last few weeks. And so that is the invitation to you, that those of you that do not know Jesus, that it is to get involved. I want you to ask questions. If you're wanting more faith, I want you to read and study the word. Join a Bible study. Begin to read the word and taste and see what it is that you can have. And pray that he would enlighten your heart. And pray that he would grab a hold of your heart. And I want, and I want you to be patient. Pray that God would give you faith. If you're a believer today, this is this is part one for you okay perhaps that you believe you know you you believe but your faith isn't quite where it needs to be that's okay i guarantee you that you are not alone in this there are many times and many people that are struggling with this mark 9 24 says our father was asking jesus if you can do anything have compassion on us and help us and jesus said all things are possible for one who believes Immediately, the father of the child cried out and said, I believe. Help my unbelief. What a great, honest prayer that you can have for your faith. So I believe, Lord. Help my unbelief. Wow. Pray that God would increase your faith. Pray that he would increase your faith today. Second part for us is one way that God helps us to increase our faith is to encourage us through the fellowship of other believers. And now we see, now it's kind of hard to do that, but we've made way, we've made way through technology that we can gather and that we can get together virtually, and that we can get through, get, uh, through video chats, through video online Bible studies, through those things. And, and we can do those things. And it's brought more and more people. People are joining Bible studies. People are joining um, the prayer time on Wednesday night, uh, through Facebook Live. I think at one time I saw there was over 100 people had watched the video um, of our live stream. That is awesome to see those that are coming uh, and encouraging others. Great messages, great um, uh, comments uh, that we've had on that. Romans 1, 11, 12 says, For I long to see you, and trust me, we long to see you church we long to see you one day that we can gather together in our building again where i long to see you that i may impart to you some spiritual gift to strengthen you that is that we may be mutually encouraged by each other's faith both yours and mine pray that pray to uh, pray that we will be able to encourage others in their faith during this time pray that you would that they would encourage you in your faith we all need encouragement uh, no matter what the what is going on in our world no matter what happens in every single day we need to have that encouragement from others next thing the part three we need to understand we need to come to terms as to what our life is going to be about um, that we're not just settling for this empty um, pleasure of what the world has to offer. We need to, like uh, Hebrews 12 says, to set our sights on Jesus, to focus on him, the perfecter, author and perfecter of our faith. That is big. That is something that is setting our sights on eternal life, on him. And we can have faith in that. We have to believe um, in what Jesus' word says. Or are we going to suppress that and look at what this is going on in the world and, and, and culture and say, ah, we can't do that. We don't have the faith. They don't have the faith because they're not going outside or they don't have the faith because, no, no, no. We have faith in what Jesus said. 
We have faith in him uh, that gave us uh, eternal life. It is him who gave us the life that is to come. That by walking in obedience and we proclaim his glory, we pro proclaim the word of God throughout the world. And we are doing this through our uh through online, we are doing this through our Zoom uh, Bible studies, through our Facebook uh, live uh, videos, all sorts of things is how we're getting the word out. First Timothy 4.10 says, For to this end we toil and strive because we have our hope set on the living God, who is the Savior of all people, especially of those who believe. We have. The reason we work so hard, the reason we go out and do that thing, it's not to gain that faith. It's not to gain that glory. It's because that, because of that, uh, because of Jesus, he saved us. That is why we work so hard. That is why we strive and we focus on him. 2 Corinthians 3.12 says, Since we have such a hope, we are very bold. Are we bold in proclaiming the word of God. Where are we bold in proclaiming our faith in Jesus? How can we be so happy? How can we be so certain in a time that seems that uncertainty is all over the place? It's because of Jesus. It's because of the faith that I have in him is why I can be bold and bold for him. That is why. That is why we can do that because Without faith, it's impossible to please him. For we must come to God. When we come to God, we must believe that he is. I want to give you just four quick points, four quick take-home points this morning. As we pray about our faith, as we talk about our faith, during this time, I pray that God, number one, would give you faith, first off. I pray that you would come to know who Jesus is. I pray that you would place your faith and trust in a God that can save, in a God that can take away the hurt and take away the healing and take away your fear. That is first and foremost, that you would accept that faith, that you would pray to God that he would give you that faith, not just up here, but down here. Number two, I pray that God would increase your faith. If you are a believer and you have faith, I pray that your faith would go through the roof. That his, your faith would increase. Increase in the knowledge of, of him, which increase in the knowledge and glorifying him during this time. I pray that God would encourage your faith. That you would be encouraging others in their faith as they encourage you. Church, this is the challenge for you. That they that you would go out and you would, whether it's a phone call, and I pray it's a phone call, not just a text message, but I pray that you would call somebody, that you would encourage them and pray with them. Give them courage. Give them faith. Help them to encourage in their faith and they in you. And the last point, number four, I pray that God would activate your faith, that it would stir up your faith in, in your life. You may be going through this time and you're just stuck on the couch and you're just worried about everything and you're worried about even going outside. Lord, I pray that he, they would activate, he would activate the faith in you that is here. Activate that faith so that you can go out boldly and proclaim his name wherever it may be, whenever it may be. So faith is the assurance of things hoped for, the conviction of of things not seen. Church, I'm excited that you got to join us this morning uh, in the Burns household as we look at faith and what faith is. I pray that you are healthy. I pray that you are taking precautions, taking the right social distancing, that you are doing what you need to do to stay safe and healthy during this time. And I pray most importantly, for your faith. I pray that your faith goes on beyond all that you can even imagine. Because the faith that we have, the faith that comes from Jesus, comes through us through the Holy Spirit 
and gives us that faith to go out and proclaim God's word in Jesus' name. So again, I'm going to ask you to look to your neighbor, look to your family again, and say this. I have faith. I have faith. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Let's pray. Father God, thank you for this time that we had together. Lord, it doesn't seem the same when we're not in the building. But Lord, we can do church anywhere. We can do church in our living room this morning. As many of us are across this country, across the world, are experiencing your grace and your favor and your love through our own homes as we as we have church in our living rooms. Lord, I thank you for the faith that you have given me through your son, Jesus Christ. Lord, I pray that there, there is one that just happens to be watching this today. I just pray, Lord, that they see the need for something beyond themselves, something beyond this life. I pray that they would, they would reach out to you. They would see and, and admit that they're a sinner. Believe that you died for their sins and that you rose again on the third day. And Lord, I pray that they confess those sins to you and they ask you into their life and into their heart, making you their Lord and Savior. Lord, I pray that right now. And I pray that you activate our faith. I pray that you would give us what we need to encourage others. I pray that you would increase our faith and that you would give us the faith that we need to endure, not just this time, Lord, not just in this pandemic, but just in the rest of our life to come. Lord, we're going to be faced with many, many things. And I pray today that our faith is activated, that it is made strong and made sure because of the words that you spoke so long ago and that you speak today through your Holy Spirit in our lives. Lord, we thank you and we love you. In Jesus' name, amen. Um, for our last song, we're going to sing Living Hope. And I know you guys love this song, so like I said before, sing out. Um, yeah, and this is just the song, this is who we are. This is who the church is. Um, and Jesus is our living hope, and we can have full and bold faith about that, so.
this morning and we pray for your safety we pray for your health and uh, we pray uh, for one day hopefully prayerfully with faith soon that we can meet again uh, in our church uh, as a family as a body again and uh, physically and not just through the computer screen or your phone or your tablet uh, so Again, thank you for joining us this morning. We pray that your faith is activated. We pray that it is powerful in the name of Jesus because he is the one. He's the author and perfecter of our faith. He's the one we are to glorify. He is the one we are to worship. So I pray today, I pray that you have a wonderful Sunday. I pray that you're able to watch um, some other churches and pastors as they bring the word today. I know that's what I'm going to do. Uh, going to have some church. Uh, I'm actually going to go to church in front of my TV with this today. So thank you again for joining us. Uh, and it, this will be on, this is on our YouTube channel. <coughs> Excuse me. And uh, so thank you again uh, for joining us. Jesus Christ is our living 
Thank you for joining us.